The Big Bang Theory is the origin story of our universe, of us. Before that, there was nothing, right? But now, some of the finest scientific minds are reimagining science's story of creation. The universe is born inside of a black hole. All of space that we live in is part of this brain. B-R-A-N-E. And rest assured, all of it involves some very weird science. This is ultimately a story as much about what we don't know as what we do. But it's worth taking a second to appreciate how much we do know about the earliest origins of the universe. So what is the Big Bang? You've probably got a sense of the main idea of the Big Bang. I mean, the name isn't that subtle. But in short, it's the idea that everything in the universe all came out of an incredibly small, incredibly dense and incredibly hot starting point. We know this because the universe is still expanding and we can measure this expansion and kind of reverse the tape and tell with remarkable accuracy that our universe is close to 13.8 billion years old. That's when time as we know it began. Before that there was nothing, right? You know, the idea sounds impossible, preposterous, but you know, if you think about it a while, you begin to realise it all depends on how you define nothing. So, what is nothing? This is nothing. The biggest pile of nothing on Earth, in fact. It's a vacuum chamber made by NASA to try and recreate the state of total nothingness by pumping out the air and freezing every remaining molecule to make a near-perfect vacuum. When they switch this place on, this is as close as we can get to a state of nothingness. Everywhere we look, we see something. We see atoms, we see trees, we see forests, we see water. But hey, right here, we can pump all the atoms out. And this is probably the arena out of which Genesis took place. So for me, the universe did not come from absolute nothing. That is a state of no equations, no t space, no time. It came from a pre-existing state, the vacuum, which is nothing but the absence of matter. In this version of nothing, energy can spontaneously transform itself into matter, and therefore, possibly one of these tiny explosions might have kept going and ended up in the Big Bang. It's now firmly within mainstream thinking that the Big Bang was not the beginning of everything. Okay, so buckle up. Here are three mind-bending theories about what happened before the Big Bang. Starting with the Big Bounce. One of the reasons our maths and physics breaks down at the start of the Big Bang is because as we approach this infinitely small, incredibly dense point, we reach just that, infinity. And in maths, when you get to infinity, that's kind of the same as cheating that whenever we encounter infinity in mathematics, something has gone terribly wrong. So the Big Bounce theory avoids this altogether. In fact, it actually does away with the Big Bang. It was certainly not Big Bang. That is impossible. I don't believe in that at all. Well, sort of. The Big Bounce theory proposes a cyclical loop where the universe goes through a period of expansion and then collapsing and then expanding again but crucially avoiding infinity by never fully collapsing to a single point. It's a surprising thing, a bouncing universe, but if we look around us, there are lots of cycles always happening. Like this, we have seasons, we have even the motion of planets around sun. In fact, nature tries to prefer things which are cyclic in a way. The core idea behind this theory is that under extreme density, like the conditions of the early universe, gravity stops being a force that pulls and starts to repel instead. What we find is that gravitational force, which is attractive, becomes repulsive when the universe is very small. And that is predicted by the mathematics, the new mathematics which we obtain by the marriage of quantum mechanics and Einstein's gravity. Problem solved. I mean, yeah, not solved as in like actually definitely solved. It's not quite that simple. Others have a different take entirely. We live on an extended object 
called a brain. Professor Neil Turok. And a brain, it's B-R-A-N-E, short for membrane. The central part of his theory is that the Big Bang was caused by a violent event in a pre-existing larger universe in a higher dimension, sometimes referred to as the Big Bulk. It's a membrane which is three-dimensional. All of space that we live in is part of this brain. And within these models, you have to have at least two of these brains. You can't have only one. There have to be at least two. And they are separated by a little gap along a fourth dimension of space. It's not one of our existing dimensions. And basically within these models, these two brains can collide. When they collide, they fill with a density of plasma and matter. And so that's the essential picture of the Big Bang in our model. Okay, got all that? The cheat sheet goes something like this. Multiple dimensions, the universe exists on a membrane, which is one of many in a higher dimension. Three, the Big Bang was started because one of these membranes collided with another one. But this last theory relies on much more familiar ideas. It owes a lot of its inspiration to Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution. The main idea is that for the universe to prosper, it has to reproduce and produce offspring universes, which for now, I'm just gonna call the Big black hole bang theory. The idea works by analogy to how biology works. It says that the universe has an ancestor, which is another universe. How is the universe born from the ancestor? According to this hypothesis, the universe is born inside of a black hole. A black hole is a star which collapses and where everything becomes infinite and time stops, there is a bounce inside of every black hole. The material contracts and contracts and contracts again and then begins to expand again. And that is the Big Bang which initiates a new region of the universe. So it relies on the idea that under incredible density, like that found at the center of a black hole, an expansion is triggered. Before the Big Bang was another universe much like our own. In that universe, there was a big cloud of gas and dust. It collapsed to form a big massive star. That star exploded. It left behind a black hole and in that black hole, there was a region, if you were misfortunate enough to fall in, you would find it becoming denser and denser and denser. You wouldn't survive this, but let's imagine you did, and all of a sudden, it would explode again, and that would be our Big Bang. The truth is, is that we may never know the answer about what happened before the Big Bang. These theories are not the kind of theories that are easy to test. And it may well be that they're actually impossible for our brains or technology to ever understand. But while this is weird science, it is serious science. These scientists are one of many who are asking a fundamental question. Where do we come from? And in case that's a bit intense for you. Is there an ultimate answer? I don't know. I don't even know if the question makes sense.